everybody, welcome back to the next part in my dialing in series for our Line 6 Helix. This time, I'm actually finally getting a chance to try uh, my brand new uh, James Tyler Variax, my uh, JTV 59 that I recently acquired. Um, the tone I'm going to work on uh, for this episode and that I've done is for one of my favorite tones from back when I was growing up. I love the Cult's Electric album. Uh, you know, uh, Love Removal Machine, Wildflower, Aphrodisiac Jacket, all those great tunes. And I decided to kind of go just with Wildflower as my target. So I'm kind of dialing in a tone that's close to that. So I thought, what a great opportunity to try the Variax. And I dialed it up to the setting R Billy, which is, I believe it's a Gretsch, 1959 Gretsch 6120, I believe. Not sure if that's what Billy Duffy used on um, the album. I know he's, he's known for using a Gretsch. So I figured that would be the closest thing I could get to it. So I, I used that and I kind of really liked what was going on with the tones. So um, yeah, so this is basically, go, go check out the performance video that I have up. I did sort of a, a, my own backing track and I did the intro so you can hear the rhythm guitar and then I did the lead with the um, rhythm guitar as well being this preset. So this is a two snapshot preset, one with rhythm guitar and one with lead guitar. So let's dive over to HX Set and take a look and see what I did for this. One thing I was really surprised about was how dark this tone was. I always, you know, we listen to these classic songs uh, just as a listener and not really with an analytical uh, ear, let's say, to the tone. And we're, we're not really paying too, too much attention. We just know it's, it's a great sound, right? But I, when I really started looking at it, there's really, it wasn't one of those tones that was really edgy at all. It was kind of a a more um, dark tone, I guess you could call it. So I approached this in a little bit of a different way than some of my others. So let's take a look at what I did. For my rhythm snapshot, if we just start at the end here, I have my typical dynamics uh, process at the end for my little mastering section. A little bit of EQ going on here. Um, 170 hertz uh, with a Q of two pulled back 60 B. It's so quite a bit of low end taken out there. Uh, mids of 700 hertz with a Q of 1.4 pulled back 5 dB, okay? And if you notice, I didn't use any lower high cut on the EQ. I did that in the cam block, okay? For the reverb, I went with the room verb with a decay of five, uh, mix of 32%. Uh, there was, it was quite a little bit of verb on this tone. You can really hear it in the intro chords where he, he plays them and then stops, you know. The delay I just had part of my template, I didn't even use it for this. Split crossover was a big part of this. I had the frequency set much higher than I normally do, in this case up around 3.5 kilohertz. Now, uh, it wasn't doing anything on the rhythm uh, snapshot, but if you notice on the lead snapshot, I boost all the frequencies above 3500 hertz by 4 dB, okay? Um, my cab now is interesting because on the rhythm snapshot, uh, for everything I'm using the 121 ribbon uh, with at a distance of three inches back. Low cut of 90 hertz and a high cut of three kilohertz on the rhythm, but on the lead, that pops up to 4.5 kilohertz. I just wanted it to cut a little bit more. The lead tended to have a little bit more of a bright sound to it. Now, a lot of folks might ask why I decided to go with the uh, high cuts and low cuts on the cab in this case, when normally I would use them in my EQ block. These are a less dramatic um, slope on these cuts, as has been discussed in a lot of my videos and a lot of other places as well. So because I was going so low with them, it just to my ears, even if I went with the EQ block and went with them higher up, it didn't quite nail the sound to my ear that I liked uh, in this particular case as much as using it on the cab block. So it was just a, a judgment call by me on this one and I was able to dial it in quicker uh, like this. Again, you could have done it on the, on the EQ block and it, you probably could have played around with it and got it there the same way. Um, you know, on this, I, I played this through a few different guitars and uh, this particular Variax model allowed me to pull that back fairly far. Um, if you find that the tone is too dark, then I would just go in here and raise that up higher until you get what you want for your guitar. So it's a simple solution to it. Now, what about the amp block? Well, I went with the Brit Plexi Jump, okay? Bright drive on 10, normal drive on 10, bass on zero, mids on 3.8, treble on five, channel volume at nine, presence at five, Master cranked up to 10. I didn't touch the deeper functions. On the lead snapshot, 
I engage a tomb screamer, a scream 808, with the gain up to eight and the tone way up to 8.6. So that in combination with the split crosser over where all the frequencies above 3500 hertz are boosted 4 dB, give it that cut and that brightness I was looking for. So let's take a listen to what that sounds like. So remember, if you have a Variax, I'm on the standard stock R-Billy, um, which is the Gretsch uh, 1959 Gretsch 6120, I believe. So uh, here's what that rhythm guitar sounded like. Okay, so as you can hear, quite dark sounding. It worked though, really nice. Actually, when I flip this over to the Rickenbacker setting on the Varax, it sounded pretty cool on that too. <laughs> Little bit thinner, a little chimier. It's called chime, makes sense. Okay, so what about the lead snap shot? Well, this is where I, I engage that tube screamer and boost everything up on the split crossover by 4 dB. And that sounds like this. <laughs> So that's how that sounds. All right, so that worked really nicely in the track. You know, again, some of these tones might be surprising to listen to them outside of the mix, but then when we put them in with the band, they just work, you know? So go take a listen to my performance video. Um, like I said, it's my own backing track, Drums by Superior Drummer 3, uh, uh, software from TuneTrack. Uh, bass was IK Multimedia's Moto Bass uh, plugin, which I love. I can put together backing tracks really fast with those. And then everything else is these two snapshots, the rhythm uh, and the lead. And that's what you're hearing on that entire backing track. So let me know what you think of it in the mix, and I hope you guys enjoy it. This will be up on Custom Tone for the Helix. Uh, obviously, you can use it with any guitar, but if you have the Variax and you set it to that R Billy stock R Billy setting, uh, you're going to get exactly... Uh, the tone that I'm getting here. So hopefully, uh, hopefully I can incorporate the Variax a little bit more into uh, some of these dialing in videos. So, so for the folks who do have a Variax, they can get the exact same sound since they have that same, uh, the same possibilities. All right, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed the performance video. Hope you enjoyed the preset. Uh, again, thanks for all the uh, great comments and the support. Uh, please like the video, share it if you don't mind, and uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I will be back soon with some more content. Thanks again for tuning in. Ciao for now, guys.